What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the third part of this Iwagumi build series covering the setup and progression of a 20-gallon freshwater aquarium. In today's episode, I will be covering the plants used in this build, my planting methods, and the start of the dry start method. Let's jump right into this. The first plant used in this tank is my S. Repens. I'm using this plant as a filler choice between the hardscape to create more obvious lines along the aquascape. I received this from Han Aquatics in great shape, though I underestimated the total number of stems I would need. Because of that, you can see me using an X-Acto knife to cut a few of these pieces so I have more plant to work with. The second plant I received, or more the second batch of plants I received, were a complete disaster. I ordered HC Cuba or Dwarf Baby Tears, uh, Pogostemon Helferi, and Christmas Moss from Boost Plants. They ship these plants without a heat pack directly to Texas, where we have been sitting at 100 plus days for weeks. As expected, these plants arrived a total brown gloopy mess. I tried working with at least the HC Cuba, but I ended up deciding to scrap the entire lot of plants as I have no intentions of starting this build off, worrying about my primary plant feature kicking the bucket. In the case of full disclosure, I did get a full refund for my plants. However, I will not be ordering from Boost Plants again as their shipping methods show a clear lack of planning and care. Anyways, about a week later, I got my hands on some new HC Cuba. However, no one locally propagates Pogostemon Helferi, so I decided I may as well add that plant in the future, just not right now. For the HC Cuba, I split each cultured cup into small portions and planted them directly into the substrate. Originally, I tried using my tongs to plant the tiny bundles, however doing this was extremely difficult as I didn't want to add too much water for the dry start method. I opted instead to use my fingers, which worked out just fine, though some of the left and right sides where the rock is close to the glass made this a bit of a challenge. Lastly, I received my order of Physidin's Gepi, which will be the primary moss I use to accent my rock structure. As part of the dry start method, I decided to try my hand at the dairy-free milkshake method of planting moss. For those of you that are not familiar with the milkshake method, this is where you literally blend your moss with water, add yogurt or buttermilk, and brush the mixture onto your rock structure. The yogurt or buttermilk add nutrients to allow the moss time to flourish and attach to the rock. This of course can only be done during a dry start, however the end result can provide a much more natural and unique look. Now the biggest downside to this method is the possible risk of mold growing from the yogurt or buttermilk. 
This can kill all of your moss, so it's a risk I wasn't particularly interested in taking. That said, we arrive at my dairy-free methods, air quotes. This is not a proven method, so I'm taking a risk here just by itself. Instead of using yogurt or buttermilk, I opted to crush some of my aqua soil, the uh, ADA Amazonia, add it to the water, and mix the moss blend with that instead. Aqua soil will of course have the nutrients plant need, so hopefully this provides the same results as the latter. At this point, the aquascape is more or less done. I may be adding another moss within the next week to add diversity and accent to the rock, but from a holistic view, the aquascape is done. So where do we go from here? Well, that's where the dry start method begins. I'm not going to discuss the dry start method in detail as there are many, many videos out there already that do the exact same thing. But the quick of it is that we are growing certain plants immersed such that they benefit from a CO2 rich environment with a lack of algae or other known or unknown factors. To accomplish that, I'll be leaving cling film wrap above the aquarium for the next three to four weeks minimum with daily spray downs to provide the moisture these plants need. We are in essence creating a mini greenhouse. So that's pretty much it. Over the next few weeks, I'll be releasing update videos on the dry start method and the plant's progress. Once we get closer to that being done, I will show you my pressurized CO2 setup and plans to eventually flood this tank. Overall, I really like how this hardscape and aquascape came together. I wish there wasn't so many issues with the plants, but eh, you know, it's minor when compared to all the work that we've done so far, and of course the work we will do down the road. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. If you're interested in watching the progression of this build, gently press the subscribe button. My name is Aaron, this is Aaron's Aquatics. I'll see you guys next time.